You tell Tarvos you'll be right back. Sort of. The now familiar Prospician Spires greet you. You swoop through the shiny architecture until you find those towers that seem to house the dreaming children. Sure enough, Tarvos' dream self can be found in one, in one tower, nestled comfortably in a recuperator coon. You poke him on the cheek. No response. You give him a little shake. Nothing. With a sigh, you rear back your hand and slap him hard. Tavros remains asleep. He's practically comatose. Why? This feels so off. Karka is awake, and Tavros isn't. And something about that is just wrong. It's all wrong. How can you help Tavros under these circumstances? Oh god, what, 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 what was that? I didn't. What, huh? I didn't finish reading that text, and then stuff just went. Wacko! Tavros yawns as he rises blarely from his slumber and squints around. He crawls out of the recruiter coon and reaches over to the ramp beside it with an instinctual motion. His hands find no wheelchair and he tumbles over and then quickly rises and realizes with a start that he is floating in midair. Whoa, what? Surprise! You inform Tavros that this is the myth mythical, mythical world of dreams. That is part of the game he was supposed to play one day, but now isn't going to. Maybe? Probably? You'll be honest, you still don't know exactly how this works. But you do know that this is a land where he can fly. That seems highly improbable that such a world would exist. Or especially that I would be allowed to enter it and fly freely around with no repercussions. It just seems like a thing that would never eventually happen to me, does it not? But it is happening, you tell him. You prove it by pinching his arm. He flinches. Uh, why did you just assault me? It's... it's a thing. Pinching is... Okay, this is a cultural misunderstanding, but the fact that he can't feel pain should prove that this place is real. Or at least as real as a magic dream world can be. I see. My arm does certainly hurt in a realistic manner, as well as my feelings due to the uncalled for attack from a friendly individual. Oh, for fuck's sake. You tell Tyros to stop worrying about that and start unworrying about how he can fly now? Oh, yeah. With unsteady movements, Tyros begins to circle his dream room. He holds his hands out as he sails around, floating upwards and then dipping down. He seems to get the hang of it quickly, and as he does, his face cracks into a warm smile. Oh, whew, oh, this feels really amazing. At your invitation, Tavros follows you out the window and sees Prospect stretching toward him. His eyes go all starey. Can I really explore all of this area? He can, you tell him. Probably. Just don't go barging into anyone's houses? Hell, <laughs> okay. Tavros does loops and twirls, pillarettes around spires, and weaves through the throngs of Prospician civilians. He hoots and hollers, the anxious crescendo in his, crescendo in his voice nearly absent. The sound echoes among the golden towers and rebounds back at you, a cacophony of childlike exhilaration. You swoop beside, uh, alongside him, buoyed by his excitement, and the two of you begin to race each other around the planet. You run out of energy before Tavros does, but eventually he comes down from his high. He floats lazily beside you, upside down, his mohawk hanging down in into his face. His eyes are locked on the sky and clouds, and he's wearing a wide, if oddly blank grin. Hey, I want to thank you for doing this for me, allowing me to feel this freedom and joy. It really means a lot. You grin and give him a thumbs up. You're glad you could help. Yeah, me too. You glance up at the clouds. How long have you been out here? You figure it's probably time to head back to the real world. You tell him you'll teleport back and then wake him up. What if he never wakes up? What? Oh no. Don't wake me up, please. I don't want to go back to the life. Oh, he doesn't want to wake up. That's somehow worse. When I could spend my days here, forever feeling blissful and happy for once? You pause. That's not the response you were expecting. Although you suppose you should have seen this coming. What about his friends? His responsibilities in the waking world? What happens when the drones come knocking? Well, those are some pertinent questions which I don't care about though. This is where I am happy and where I belong. That's what you wanna, right? To help me be happy? Right. Then your work here is done. He smiles at you, and you feel like you should smile back. 
But there's a hint of sadness behind his eyes that gave you pause. It's like he's waiting for you to take charge and tell him off for choosing escapism. Waiting for you to make the hard decision he doesn't have the guts to make. But that's not the kind of person you are. If he'd rather spend most of his time asleep, that's good enough for you. Given the planet he lives on, you can't blame him. So you give him a little wave and vanish into the ether of cannon. By the time he works up the nerve to by the time he works up the nerve to say something, you're already gone. <laughs> I'm already gone. Well, I guess that that's the choice he chooses then. All right, no flying. We gotta bring Tavros back to reality. So let's help him stay grounded. From the darkness, you reach into your muddled memories and clutch and catch a glint of cold iron. When you open your eyes, Pupa Pan stares back at you. He would have you believe that faith is all it takes to fly, but you think Tavros could use something a little more material. You put a gentle hand on his shoulder and ask him what you can do to help him spread his wings. His metaphorical wings, that is. It's not like he could even ever sprout real ones. The very thought is absurd. Tavros sighs. I just wish I could live more independently, I guess. To take charge of my life and become less under Friska's dumb. You think Tarvos could use some better friends? Real friends. What are you gonna do, bring him a John again? I do have some. Napeta is very kind to me often. Gamzee and I like to throw down sick rhymes, and Kanaya tries to help me with Friska. But there's not a lot they can do when we live far away. And as nice as my Lucis is, he is unable to help me with all my issues, due to his small size limiting him to only moving and carrying small objects to me when I required them. The simple fact is that I didn't build my hive with the expectation of one day using a four-wheel device to navigate it. Oh, I know what you need. You need to like kind of redesign your whole house. That's what you need. Can Tarfos move to a better hive? Could you help him with that? No. As a bronze, the stipend I receive is not enough to cover such things. Even this four-wheel device, which is highly basic compared to some high blood models, would have cost me over a wipe's worth of savings. Few changes are available to me, economically speaking, especially if I want to not alert drones to my unsuitedness for troll expectations. You see, if money is the issue, that's not something you could help him with, at least not directly. But you might know others who can. You tell Tavros that you're going to step out for a moment to fetch a mutual friend. Uh, is she the rich friend? He seems briefly surprised when you return with Kanaya. You guess you don't blame him. This strikes you as a pretty rare pairing, conversationally speaking. Oh, Kanaya. It's nice to see you, in person, unexpectedly. Wow, my hive is terrible looking. Sorry, but hi. You look nice. Yes, I do. How are you faring? Has my advice regarding the construction of an imaginary friend helped aid your self-esteem? Well, I haven't really got to try it yet, so no, it hasn't, I guess. Kanaya suppresses a sigh. Okay. Well, let's get directly to business. I've brought some materials with which to renovate your hive. Oh yeah, we're gonna renovate your whole house. Oh! Please advise us uh, as to how, to be how best to redesign the place to suit your needs. Tarvo's eyes water up and he sniffs, leaning forward in his chair. Really? You would do that for me? despite it taking a large portion of time and effort, and presumably money as well? I don't really spend my stipend on much besides fabric. And I intend to twist Friska's arm until she offers a portion of her flarping treasure to foot the bill too. And of course, I do for you. Any less would be a rejection of my helpful sensibilities. Kanaya says it with a neutral tone and a straight face, as if there's nothing remarkable about it, but Tavros nevertheless breaks into a grin. Wow, thanks. Okay, give me some time to develop ideas on how to properly jack this hive up and deliver the most utterly dope and pimped up changes. This is going to be so great. With a chainsaw, okay. You give Tarvos the request of time and then begin to the work in earnest. You weren't sure what to expect, but the construction process proves smoother than anticipated. Kanaya brings a set of alien devices, which she claims to have borrowed from a seed-dwelling friend of hers. One converts raw materials into a strange substance that reminds you of fruit gushers. Kanaya fells trees with her chainsaw and feeds them into the machine, 
And before long, you have a trove of the gusher things. So we're using the, the things even though we're not playing the game. The other device expends the gushers to modify buildings. It has a holographic click and drag interface, much like the Sims played in real life. If only we could design our houses in real life like that. You find this construction software to be incredibly handy and also eerily familiar? But honestly, you find everything eerily familiar these days. Yeah, I think you've already gone through this. There's too many timelines overlapping. Yes, it's very convenient. Home construction has been an important part of troll culture for as long as history remembers. Most do not know why, although to me, the reason is obvious. Preparation for the game, which we will now no longer be playing due to outside interference. Wait, she knows about that? It feels like everyone knows about that at this point. Yes. I figured out what was going on a day or two after you visited me, but I thought it prudent not to get particularly dramatic about it all. That was very thoughtful of her. Yeah, I try. Is this a new hive? I feel like we're staying outside. <laughs> Kanaya finishes feeding logs into the first device and begins to manipulate Tavro's hive with the other. Together, you are a clockwork team. Tavro provides directions, Kanaya implements them with her stellar sense of design. And you provide moral support by standing around looking cute. <laughs> the best kind of moral support. Okay, yes. Nudge that shelf over to the left? Yeah, like that. Wait, actually right? Further. Okay, no, go back. A bit more? That's almost good. Now make it a little tad higher. Yes. No, lower. There, there, she's getting pissed off. There, right there, and... Yes, perfect, I think. Okay, actually, can you go back to where it first was? <laughs> it looks only slightly different. In the end, it takes until the next day to finish construction, which is actually a great time. You were expecting to have to zap forward once or twice for the sake of narrative brevity, but with the alternative build tools, Tavro's hive is swiftly renovated. It is far more spacious than it once was, with ramps and rails aplenty. Under Tavro's guidance, you widen hallways lower counters, revamp bathrooms. It's like a brand new house. You don't have a ribbon to cut the celebration, so Tavro summons some bizarre Fidu spawn creature to shoot confetti all over the entrance to the hive. It's all gross and sticky and you hate every second of it, but he's having fun. After that, Tavro spends a while just exploring the hive. He wheels himself through each block, awed by the ease with which he can navigate the space. By the time he returns to his respite block, his grin is radiant. You take it he likes the new place. Oh yes, this pad is now generally frigid. It makes me feel more confident, like the world is my beveled jewel container. Like I can say to Friska, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me, biatch, <laughs> okay. I feel like we're, we're like the equivalent of the Fab Five coming to his place and just changing everything. Okay, I won't say that properly, but I could. Actually, maybe I will say that, as well as plenty of other deliriously rude things which long I have avoided saying. Okay, that's probably enough, you tell him. Kanai is staring icily at him, but he doesn't seem to notice. You suggest that it's a good time to settle down. The sun's going to be rising pretty soon. Right. While we still have some moonlight, would you like to stay for a while, Kanai, and play some games with us? Oh no, that's quite alright. I'm afraid I have duties to attend to at home. I... A left address in the oven. Why would it be in the oven? Do you cook your clothes? Kanaya blinks and carefully maintains her poise. It's made out of clay, you see. I'm getting experimental. She just wants to leave. Oh, that makes sense. Well, goodbye. Okay. She smiles at Tarvos and shoots you a point of glance. You take it as your cue to place a hand on her shoulder, concentrate on her hive and set her back in a flash of light. Once she's gone, Tavros wheels up to you and nudges you in the hip. So, regarding Kanaya, this could perhaps be me misreading the situation, but I, when I reach deep inside and tap into the marvelous power of the self-esteems, it tells me that I'm very right and smart. Did you see the way she was smiling at me? Yeah, I don't know if you're smart and right, you're more like incorrect. Almost in a way as to suggest Amorous inclinations? Eh? Eh? <laughs> Did you not see how fast she left? He waggles his eyebrows fiercely in your direction. Oh jeez. You tell Tavros that's just, uh, what friendship looks like? She's not his type. Trust me, you say. 
drat. But oh well. I think there is a saying about this, that the sea has many fish in it. Now that I am feeling better, I think perhaps I will one day go fishing for a quadrant or two. Well, it's a start. It's going to take some time for this kid to figure out what genuine self-esteem is like. But just like the prospicient clouds part to reveal a brilliant sky in blue, you think Taros is on the verge of seeing the sun. The moon? This metaphor could work better on Earth. Taros can be more than he is, and he doesn't need to change to do it. When he offers you a smile, there's a spark of compassion behind it that tells you he's already worth the world. All he ever needed was someone to believe in him. And money. He also needed money. So, would you like to perhaps celebratory play a round or two of Fidu Spawn with me? I am feeling much more prepared to enjoy a game, and perhaps think that this time I will proceed to crush you with my incredible might as a Fidu Spawn breeder. Except I mean that in a nice way, like that of a friendly challenge. Uh, if you'll accept. The word friend in that sentence was all you needed to hear. Uh, apparently it was all I needed to hear to spawn some bugs with my new best bro. Okay, so hoping Tarot stay grounded seemed kind of like a good ending, but I feel like none of those are actually what the game wants you to- like, what's canon? Because I, I feel like they want us to round everyone off, so... This one might be like the canon ending, but I'm just guessing for now. So let's side with Friska. You can't resist her force of personality. When Friska speaks, it just sounds right. You tell Tavros that he should accept Friska's offer. Hell yeah! See, Tavros? My buddy here agrees. Let bygones be bygones. Ugh. Ugh. Tavros shrinks into his chair, small and sad. The two of you just stare at him as the awkward silence swirls like mist around you. Friska clenches her fist and steps forward, but you quickly put a hand on her shoulder and she pauses. Ugh. Being around here is depressing. And someone doesn't want my help anyway. Whatever. Come on, Wolf. I've had enough bow for one night. Let's go chill out somewhere less boring. But this is Tavro's route. Like, I don't know, an arcade? Maybe a uh, movie theater? <laughs> what do people without Eleusis to take care of even do? You suggest to Friska that you can find out. Together. She beams. Uh, okay. Bye, I guess. Oh, we're actually la leaving him? Tavro seems conflicted, as though he can't decide whether to be relieved that Friska is leaving, or upset that you're abandoning him. You don't really care though. Whoa, reader! You're going to an arcade! Whoop, I was wrong. Fucking rude. <laughs> Friendship? Pl what does that even say? Plus eight? Wow. You can't leave the troll that you're on the route for. Well, I guess the other one was the happy ending then. We're not dragging Tavros into our war against the... Whatever. A heart so true. You stood by Tarvo's side and helped re renovate his hive. You still don't understand Fidu Spawn, though. Yeah, I don't. Wait. Oh, wait, that's for the next one. What is this, man? There's always these mysterious things that I just don't know how to get. Okay, so that was pretty a standard route for the most part, but something really weird happened when we chose the fl uh, fly route. I don't know if that was the game breaking or that was actually supposed to happen, but it glitched for a moment and then it was like he woke up. So I feel like there's a little something more to that. I don't know what it means. I hate that they keep throwing all these tiny hints at me and then it's like, I don't know what this means! It doesn't connect to anything, it's just like little small tidbits. I don't know, maybe someone already figured it out, but I have no freaking idea. But in any case, we kind of pushed Friska aside because she was being really mean. And we befriend the Tavros, and the next time we're to befriend Aradia or whatever, because I think that's how you pronounce it. But in any case, that's it for this route. And then the next one, we're gonna do the route two, so I'll see you guys then. Oh. Oh, 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 it's coming. Shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm screwed. <laughs>